Now I'm going to talk about the continuous genetic algorithm. This is the ended version of the binary genetic algorithm, and then so uh, we're going to talk a little bit more about uh, uh, we're going to talk about how it works, and then today that is the outline. And uh, as I mentioned, we focus on the continuous version, and then so uh, we are going to just give all the details about how do we implement the basic continuous genetic algorithm, and. Uh, I have to emphasize that, that this is the very basic version of the continuous genetic algorithm. If you are going to look into the literature, and then you will find that uh, we have a lot of advanced continuous genetic algorithm. And uh, we also look at uh, some examples, as well as to have an example about doing the genetic algorithm by hand. Now, today, this is the aims. Um, so. Actually, we are trying to understand uh, the process of the genetic algorithm or the CGA, that is the continuous genetic algorithm. And then uh, we are going to develop the problem solving skill, that is, how do we formulate the problem as a genetic algorithm? So that uh, that is what we have done before. Through some examples, we are going to um, try to develop further skills to do that. Again, just to recall that uh, we are going to do minimization, that means if you're going to do maximization minus minus one uh, times minus one to the cost function to turn it into the maximization problem. Okay, let's take a look at the details about the continuous genetic algorithm. So compare with the binary genetic algorithm, so we can find out some difference as well as we find out that the limitations of the BGA and uh, because in BGA we are going to use bit, that is 0 and 1 to represent the chromosome. The chromosome, that is, we have binary string to represent uh, the decision variables. But when we talk about continuous genetic algorithm, the main difference is that instead of using binary string in chromosome, we are going to use real number or floating point number. Okay, so I will emphasize this later on. Yeah, so Anyway, at the moment, we use voting point number, and then so that means when we use voting point number, that is when we have a chromosome, see, instead of binary string, we are going to use real number. For example, this is the, the first number, that is 1.2. The second decision variable, that is 3.3, .3, so and so. So we do not need to do the, the, the encoding and decoding. Yeah, So that means the precision we can increase the precision and the and the precision of every decision variable depends on the machine precision for example when we do the script and if the if the if the floating point number the precision is defined by four byte and then to, say a double number and then the precision is defined by four byte yeah but notice that when i mention about four byte it doesn't mean that so we are going to use uh, four byte, each byte has eight bit. It doesn't mean that we are going to use 32 bit to represent the chromosome. This 32 bit, that is the way to represent a floating point number according to, for example, IGB standard, yeah? So we have different way to represent the floating point number. In that case, because we do not have the encoding and decoding, and then so basically we we remove these process so that B, uh, so that CGA the continuous genetic algorithm we run faster, yeah, and also because if we are going to talk about the high dimensional case, so we have a lot of decision variables. If we are going to use uh, one hundred bits. Per decision variable, yeah, and then so now if we have if we have one hundred decision variable, that means we have one hundred bits times one hundred decision variable. The chromosome will have this number of bits, yeah. But now if we are going to talk about we are talking about one hundred decision variable in the voting point number, we only have one hundred, yeah. So that's why the continuous genetic algorithm will have a bigger potential to deal with complex problem compared with BGA and then uh, this is more logical to represent um, 
the chromosome because in a lot of real world example, the decision variables or the parameters, they are real values. Yeah? Okay, and now this is the process and then uh, this process uh, actually it is very familiar to us and then uh, we have initialized the population and uh, we are going to do evaluation. We still need to do evaluation and then uh, selection, selection and uh, reproduction, mutation. That is the flow track that is given right here. That means we are going to define the cause function, define the decision variable and also select some control parameters. Say the probability of crossover, probability of mutation and then so whether we are going to do elitism or not. And then generally, initial population, evaluate each cost, the cost of each chromosome in the population and then selection, selection, when we are talking about the same process that is the selection, later selection, uh, I mean the, the lateral selection as well as the selection for crossover. So we have crossover here, we have mutation and then check the convergence. If it does not converge, go back to the top and repeat this process. So this is the full chart for continuous genetic algorithm. The only difference compared with the binary genetic algorithm is that we do not have decoding and encoding right here. Yeah. Okay. Just to recall the overall genetic algorithm process. So in this population, we are going to generalize that. Now this is the population. The population, for example, we have any number of decision variable. For example, the first one that is 1.2, the next one that is 3.3, .3, so and so. Yeah. Now we do not use binary string to represent that. Everything right here, that is the phenotype, that is the real number. Yeah. Okay. And now say after we find the cost of each chromosome, that means we need to have a cost function that is x1, x2, x3, so and so. That is, say this is x1, this is x2. So we just fit this number into this cost so that we obtain the cost right here. At this point, we are going to rank the population and perform natural selection. Now, when we do lateral selection, it means that after we rank the population, we are going to draw a line right here, and then the lower half will be replaced. Yeah, we will be discard and replace. So, based on the upper half, we are going to do selection, and we are going to do crossover and mutation. So, we are going to select some parents as the first pair, as well as the next pair, so and so. If we required to generate more of swing. Each pair of parents, we are going to generate two of swing. Yeah? So the first pair generate the first pair of off swing. And um yeah. And then so the after that we are going to do cause over right here. If you still remember that doing the cause over we just simply swapped. Yeah. If so second pair and uh, these four will be the offspring we paste the lower half and then so we are going to do we do not do the ranking but uh, now we are going to just we are going to put it we are going to do mutation on this population select some bits right uh, select some decision variables right here we are going to do mutation yeah so that is the overall process they are exactly the same as we have done in the binary genetic algorithm, but the there will be a little bit different is that because when we when we deal with floating point number or real value, we have different kind of mutation formula to work on each genes. Okay, and now we are talking about the variables as well as the cause function. They are very similar to the binary genetic algorithm, the chromosome, that is. Instead of using binary string, we just use the real value as I mentioned before, parameter 1, parameter 2, parameter n1, and then this n1, that is the lump of, lump of decision variable, depends on the application. So once you have these parameters, for example, p1 represent the voltage, p2 represent the current, and then so p3 whatever fit it into this cost function and then so we will find the cost and now 
Again, no coding is required, and then so, so we can just simply compute the cost directly. And then so this is the population. When we go to this full chart, this full chart that is after we define the cost function and then the number of decision variable as we have done before, generate the initial population. Now take a look at this population, we choose the end point. That is eight. So that the chromosome format representation that is XY because when we consider this cost and then so we have two decision variables that is X and Y so that uh, we come up with this formula and then the chromosome representation XY so every time we random randomly generate this chromosome where uh, the population fit this number into the cost right here and then this cost will be can be found yeah so now the thing is that we have x in the range of 0 to 10 y that is in the range of 0 to 10 when we generate this random population one method we can do is that we are going to generate a number randomly so for example we choose we call this is a this is b so we can just simply a plus b minus a times r r that is in the range of 0 to 1 in that case this random number is in this range so what you what you can find out that um, um, when r that is 0 this term is gone so you will have a number a when it is 1 and then so x will become b yeah so in between that is you are going to generate something in between a and b so we can guarantee that all elements right here within the boundary given by a and b okay so after we evaluate all the cost in this step we are going to move on to the next step that is the selection we know that we have the lateral selection as well as the selection for crossover. We break this down into two process. So we can have the first old approach or the selection weight. I'm not going to go through the details again. Yeah. So if you forgot or uh, if you need to recall what we are going to do with the selection weight, refer to the binary uh, refer to the binary genetic algorithm. That means after ranking of this cost, because we do minimization. So the smallest lumber that is at the top the largest lumber that is at the bottom so we are going to draw a line assume that end pot uh, selection weight that is 50 percent so we are going to keep the first four yeah so now after we have done the lateral selection that is we have these four chromosomes they have the potential to act as the parents and then so remember that in order to select them to be parents we have these four methods pairing from the top to bottom random pairing weighted random pairing as well as tutorial selection so i have talked about i have um uh, gone through that in the previous lecture so please refer to those slides